I have a lot of Republican friends and libertarian friends who tell me taxation is theft and using taxes to fund government programs like health care is wrong because it takes from someone who earned their money and gives to somebody else who hasn't earned it. Ah, oh, did someone lay down some truth and you can't take it? I don't agree with that. Uh, I want to know what you're, what you would say is the best counter argument to that and sort of debunks that claim. Notice the mindset here. This guy has no idea how to respond to the argument, yet the one thing he doesn't do is consider that his friends might be right and he might be wrong. And so for a resolution, he reaches within his own echo chamber. That's what cults do, folks, not rational people. The fact of the matter is that, you know, I make a living doing this show. I pay my taxes. But I couldn't do this show if I hadn't gotten a public education in a public school. Well, that much is true because you wouldn't have gotten this bogus state indoctrination. You might have actually been educated and learned to think for yourself. Tell me something, Hartman. How come people who went to private schools and charter schools or were homeschooled outperform their public school counterparts, even after adjusting for things like race and family income? Also, I feel I have to point out again that real per-pupil spending has been skyrocketing since the 80s, with pupil performance stagnant or even dropping in some areas. We're paying a lot more for education with nothing to show for it. I couldn't do this show if I couldn't get to work on public roads. Yeah, because without government, everyone will be standing around scratching their heads wondering how to get places. It's not like we had roads for thousands of years before government started making them. It's not like we had intercontinental trading routes for tens of thousands of years before the first governments appeared. No, the free market is good at making incredibly complex technological devices, but it can't make a flat thing. We need government for that. We wouldn't have this studio if we didn't have local police and fire protection. By the way, the fallacy here is known as is ought. Someone looks at how things currently are and assumes that that's the way they should be. Indeed, the only way they can happen. Police as we know them didn't exist until the 1800s, so I guess before then no one was protected from crime. And of course, no one pays for private security. I'm linking to a story about a neighborhood who got rid of the government cops and hired their own. They get better protection for less money. And that's just one example. In many states, including Michigan, South Carolina, Arizona, Utah, and Ohio, private security forces have the same police and arrest powers as sheriff's departments do. Oh, but without government, who would arrest people for having a plant and burst into their homes and kill the family dog? Funny how he never mentions that aspect of government policing. This business of, of my program, which is a small business that I own, this business would not, would not exist without, without uh, very specific laws that create court systems. See, it's things like this that are how I know that Hartman is a liar and not just a useful idiot for the political class. It is extremely unlikely that businesses go to government courts to resolve conflicts. Even less likely with a small business like he claims his is. They almost always use private arbitration because they can get a resolution much faster and without all the prohibitive court costs that can bankrupt a small business. If we shut down government the way libertarians want and turned everything over to the billionaires... Gotta love the rhetoric. Things already have been turned over to the billionaires. Who do you think government is working for? The little guy? Here's a question I never get an answer to. How come the billionaires give tons of money to Democrats and almost none to libertarians? and turned all, turned all our roads into toll roads. First of all, in many cases, toll roads would be a marked improvement. There are many private tollways in the U.S. and other places like the Paris Tunnel that show that these are much better at handling high-capacity traffic while not being expensive enough to shut people out. The market has an incentive for that. Second, most private roads are not and would not be toll roads. Why? Well, do you think Walmart wants you paying money to drive on the roads to get to their store? Or do you think they'd rather have you keep that money to spend on their products when you get there? Here's another question I never seem to get an answer to. If only government can do these things, why does it need to continually pass laws preventing the free market from competing? Each and every one of these examples is government breaking your legs, handing you a crutch, and saying, see, without us, you couldn't walk.
And by the way, so far he's had no response to the main point, which is that taxation is collected by force and therefore, by definition, is theft. If I steal your money and then cut your grass, it's still theft, no matter how good a job I do or how useful the result is. This is the libertarian fantasy. Um, what you would end up with is, is uh, something like some of the most backward nations in the world. Um, the, that libertarian Somalia. theology, uh, it, it would be worse than Somalia, frankly. Somalia isn't libertarian. Knock it off. I debunked that years ago. And Don Rumsfeld and George W. Bush and Dick Cheney tried that with Iraq. Yep, he's back to the old Iraq is libertarian claim. I debunked that too. All right, place your bets. What's the next bit of long debunked prat he's going to come up with next? Which example of something that isn't even remotely libertarian is he going to use? Uh, they tried that with Chile. Uh, Milton Friedman himself supervised that back in the 70s. Yep, everyone who said Pinochet, collect your winnings. Although you won't get much because, well, it was easy to predict, wasn't it? Milton Friedman was never an advisor to Pinochet. If anything, his influence led to Pinochet gradually losing power and Chile eventually coming a democracy in 1990. In fact, in his 1980 documentary, Free to Choose, Friedman said, Your conception of freedom, does that apply in Chile today? Where the Chile is not system? politically free. Chile today does not have political freedom. And, and I do not condone, system. but let me go on for a moment, if you will. You raise the question, let me answer it. Chile is not a politically free system, and I do not condone the political system. But the people there are freer than the people in communist societies because government plays a smaller role, because the free enterprise that has been emerging has been cutting down the fraction of the total income of the people spent by government because unemployment has been going down, output has been going up, food production has been going up. The conditions of the people for the first, for not for the first time, but in the, in the past few years, has been getting better and not worse. They would be still better to get rid of the junta and to be able to have a free democratic system. And in a 1991 lecture he gave at the Smith Center, he said, I have nothing good to say about the political regime that Pinochet imposed. It was a terrible political regime. In Chile, the drive for political freedom that was generated by economic freedom and the resulting economic success ultimately resulted in a referendum that introduced political democracy. Now, at long last, Chile has all three things. Political freedom, human freedom, and economic freedom. Chile will continue to be an interesting experiment to watch to see whether it can keep all three or whether, now that it has political freedom, that political freedom will tend to be used to destroy or reduce economic freedom. Now can we please knock it off of the whole Pinochet thing? By the way, I can't help noticing again how often state cultists bring up Pinochet, but they never mention Salvador Allende, the socialist leader of Chile whose government caused the economic collapse, including the plummeting of real wages, hyperinflation, and collapsing exports, as well as the constitutional crisis, all of which allowed Pinochet to take over in the first place. And if you're not going to pay for that with taxes, how are you going to pay for it? It ain't going to happen. Gotta love the narcissism of statists. It's like the argument from incredulity times a thousand. He can't think of a way it can happen, so it must not be possible, even though we have lots of examples of it actually happening. So it's, it's like, you know, to even suggest that taxation is theft and therefore we should resist it is, is to reveal mind-boggling stupidity, or ignorance anyway. But again, you've done nothing to show that it isn't. You've tried to justify the theft. You haven't shown that it isn't theft. Because it is. It's theft, extortion, and racketeering. The Mafia will give you very good protection if you pay them for it. But since they don't give you the choice of whether or not to pay them for it, it's extortion and cannot be morally justified. Hartman wants his holy government to be endowed with immunities to the ethical limitations the rest of us have to live up to. Hey, thanks for watching! Please hit like and subscribe and keep these videos coming by donating, becoming a subscriber and getting special benefits, or even for free with their time. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you!